So this morning for a couple of thoughts, um, I was thinking that we would consider another little another little word that is also a verb. Last week we had talked about the word the word come, different times that that was used throughout throughout scripture and also the invitations of of Christ in the Gospels to to come. And the word that we'll look at this morning, like I already said, it's a ver- another verb. And it's also four letters. And it is the word wait. W-A-I-T. <clears throat> we all know what what it is to to have to wait on on something or or somebody. You wait in line at the bank. You wait for the food to be passed to you at the supper table. You wait for the light to change at the at the intersection. Or you wait for the the check to arrive in the mail. Many times in the Psalms and in the Psalms I believe the word is used uh, 18 times, um, even actually it's more than that, but it's used at least 18 times in the, in the sense of, of resting in expectations, expectation and, and patience. And that would be one of the ways that we could, we could define the word wait, to rest in expectation and patience, to wait. So we know what it is to wait, but what does it mean? What does it mean when we say that, that we should wait on the Lord? That's a very common phrase that is used in, in the Psalms and other places, to, to wait on the Lord. What does it mean to wait on Him? What does it mean to rest in expectation and, and patience for the Lord? Because we can be so, as humans, we can be so impatient by our nature, so, so restless, so, um, yeah, impatient. We don't like to stand in line. We want, we want things to happen quick. We want God to show up. We want God to show up and answer our prayers and, and answer them now. We'd like to get a response or we'd like to get a reaction or we'd like to get an answer now or quickly. We live in a society of of, the, of of this, where we have quick oats and instant coffee and fast food and fast cash and instant messaging and all of these all of these things, but but we but we also I think that we we know that those things that are worth having that anything that is worth worth having and worth receiving and worth learning and worth knowing and worth experiencing and worth receiving, that it's also worth waiting for it. Those things of true value that, that we long to, long to possess or long to experience, that they are truly worth waiting for. And so how long has it been since, since you or since I have have waited on on the lord you know we have we have waiting lists and waiting rooms and sometimes we say that we're we're playing the waiting game but how long has it been since we have in in quietness or in expectations and patience um waited waited for the lord what does it mean to to wait for the lord what does it mean to wait expectantly and to wait joyfully and to wait and to wait patiently there's many places in psalms like i already mentioned and you can turn to psalm 25 we'll probably read from 25 and 27 and then somewhere in the in the uh, new testament as well but <clears throat> many different places in the psalms it, it uses this term there's there's promises that if we in isaiah 40 we're familiar with this one that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We all find ourselves exhausted and, and fatigued and, and stressed at times. And, 
and we we rush from this to that and and how long has it been since we have taken time to to wait on the Lord and haven't rushed through those times of reflection and quietness and 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 expectation of receiving from God they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength so in Psalm 25 it would be uh, 24 I guess in the Septuagint I'll read a couple of verses there verse 3 says for all who wait upon you shall shall not be ashamed for all who wait upon you shall not be ashamed and also down in verse 5 lead me in your truth lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation and on you I wait all the day on you I wait all the day so what's the value of this of this waiting experience what's the value of this of this of this wait because we can feel so so impatient but there is something that God wants to teach us in these in these times of waiting there's something that he wants to show us and he wants us to learn we don't and and so we we um we need to learn to to wait with that with that expectancy that that there's a lesson here that he wants to teach us there's something here that he wants to show us so moving over to psalm 27 in this in the uh let's see here in the septuagint it'd be 26 i'm going to read this i'm going to read this psalm because this whole this whole psalm is the experience of David as he was waiting, as he was waiting on the Lord. The Lord is my light and my savior. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defender of my life. Whom shall I dread? When the wicked drew near against me to eat up my flesh, those who afflict me and are my enemies, they weakened and fell. Though an army should array itself against me, my heart shall not be afraid. Though war should rise against me, in this shall I hope. One thing I ask from the Lord, this I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold the delights of the Lord, and visit his temple. For he hid me in his tabernacle in the day of my troubles. He sheltered me in the secret place of his tabernacle. He set me upon he set me high upon a rock and now behold he has lifted up my head above my enemies I went around and offered in his tabernacle a sacrifice of joy I will sing to the Lord and praise him with the harp O Lord hear my voice wherein I cry have mercy on me and hear me my heart speaks to you my face speaks my face seeks you your face, O Lord, I will seek. Do not turn away your face from me. Do not turn away your servant in wrath. Be my helper. Do not utterly cast me away, nor forsake me, O God, my Savior. For my father and my mother forsook me, but the Lord laid hold of me. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your law. Set me on a straight path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the souls of those who afflict me. For unjust witnesses rise up against me, and injustice lies to itself. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be courageous and strengthen your heart and wait on the Lord. So he's not, he's saying that it's a time of, of being active in in considering the Lord and his and his ways and and considering those things that are truly worth waiting for and to be and to be encouraged and strengthen your heart he says and wait on the Lord <clears throat> so there's a few more I'll just I'll just mention Psalm 37 7 rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him Psalm 37 9 says those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth Psalm 37, 4, wait on the Lord and keep his way. 
Psalm 52, verse 9, I will wait on thy name. Psalm 62, 5, wait thou only upon God. Psalm 69, 3, mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. Psalm 69, 6, let them not, let them not that wait on thee be ashamed. Then moving, there's even a couple of more there. I'll skip down and read one from Proverbs. Proverbs 20 says, wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. And then Isaiah 40, mentioned this one already, Isaiah 40, verse 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Also in, in Lamentations, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. That was chapter 3 and verse 26 also says, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. So we thought of this this word wait as a way to define it, we to rest in expectations and in expectation and patience. So there's other there's other ways that this word is is used. Uh, even in the scripture it has different it can have different meanings such as to lie in ambush as an enemy. It's used quite a few times that way. Um, we also might think of it as as a waiter would wait at a at a table but primarily <clears throat> I was pulling out those those words that where it's used in the sense of of resting in expectation and and patience to to wait on the Lord here's a few from the New Testament and then we'll read from Matthew uh, 25 as well Luke 12 it says like unto men that wait for the Lord that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Acts 1, 4, it speaks about waiting for the, for the promise of the Father. So there's, there's a lot of our, of our life, a lot of our existence can, can seem to be caught up in, in waiting. We're always, you know, planning, um, planning for this and, and waiting for this. And children, as they grow up, they just can't wait for um, all these different highlights of their of their lives so there's a very it's a very real part of our of our existence to always be always be waiting on something and I think what uh, what the Lord is what, it, what he's inviting us to is to is to wait in an active kind of way not in a restless kind of way but in a in a in a sense of expectation looking for opportunities to, to serve while we wait, look for opportunities to learn what does God want to teach me while I, while I wait, and, and to not be so caught up in, in that thing in the future that we're waiting for that we rush past that thing in the present that God wants to show us or that God wants to, to teach us. Galatians 5 says, we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says, to wait for his Son from heaven. And also I wanted to read from Matthew 25. It's a story of the, the ten virgins. virgins. We'll read that story and just make a few comments about, about that. <clears throat> Matthew 25, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those, were, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. 
and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the, <clears throat> and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So I just wanted to read that story of, of, of these ten virgins to, to consider, to look at them as an example of, of, how, of how we should wait or how we shouldn't wait. Five of them were wise. So we have five of them who were waiting, and they were in a, in a, they were in, in a prepared and an expectant manner. They, they were looking for him to come. And yeah, life, life did go on as normal. They, they fell asleep. They were, they were, um, it was nighttime, and so, they, and so they slept. So life went on as normal, and yet they were living in that, in that way of, of preparedness and expectancy. Whereas the other five, they were, yeah, they had made, made um, some level of, of preparations as well. But, but when, it, when he didn't show up like they thought he would, when they, he, didn't, he didn't show up as maybe as early as they thought he would, they began to grow, they began to grow complacent and did not continue to take the necessary precautions to, uh, to be ready. So, so how, how, are we, how are we in comparison to them? Are we... Are we continuing to wait in a courageous and an expectant kind of way? Or are we starting to lose our, lose our hope or lose our joy or lose our enthusiasm for, for that which is to come? So I hope, that, hope to encourage us today that we should have our lamps trimmed like the five wise did. And yes, life does go on, but let's be, let's be prepared. Let's be expectant. And let's have a have have quiet, quiet hearts that that wait for him, remembering that those things which are truly worth having are are also worth waiting for. So God bless you all. Let's stand for prayer.